Hi, this is Eric Martin with Board Game Geek. I'm here with Sean Lashkari and Jim Dietz from Ultra Pro... Ultra Pro Entertainment. Now, yes, Ultra Pro Entertainment, uh, formerly of Jolly Roger, which is now part of Ultra Pro. Correct. All right. Um, so I was hoping you could give an overview of 13 Days, which uh, is just out now. Or recently. Uh, I believe it ships Monday to yes. the stores. All right. Yes. So April, Distributors. April 2016. Um, okay. The, the, the simplest way to describe it is uh, based on Twilight Struggle, which is, of course, on Board Game Geek is one of the top three or four games. Yeah. This is effectively Twilight Struggle playable in 30 to 40 minutes. Okay. Um, which is ideal when you're trying to compare it to a game that takes four to five hours to play. Okay. It becomes a little less intimidating because there are less areas. And uh, because it's faster, it plays in three turns. Uh, it was designed by a couple of guys in Denmark mm -hmm. who originally sent it to Jason Matthews. Uh, Asger and Daniel are great. Jason uh, sent it to me. He's like, I think this is looking pretty good. Sent it to me, and I got in contact. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, this is pretty good. And so we started the process of printing it. And um, basically a turn, um, you've got a track here which is the DEF contract. Mm -hmm. If it goes up too high, you wind up starting nuclear war. Okay. And you've got three different uh, areas. You've got the military track, the political, and world opinion. Okay. And on the board, those colors coordinate with the various areas, which right. has an effect based on the cards here, which are your agendas. That's where you score points on a turn. Okay. Not every area scores. You have a general idea of where your opponent's going to play. Uh, you, you mark that with flags, and you play out the turn, reveal, and score points. That's okay. on the prestige track. And nobody, you can't ever have more than a five-point lead, okay. which prevents a runaway leader syndrome from, from occurring. Um, after you've picked your agendas, you're going to play cards. Much like Twilight Struggle, you have uh, various cards. You have Soviet cards, American, and you also have neutral cards. If an American player plays the American card, he's going to get to choose between playing three blocks into an area mm -hmm. on this card, one for each, or doing the event on the card. Okay. If the Russian player draws the card, the American player gets to do the event automatically, and then the Russian player gets to play cubes. The catch with this card is it's got a nuclear symbol. Whenever you play a card with a nuclear symbol, that represents escalating tensions. So you're going to raise the track where you play it by one minus. So you have three cubes, it's gonna raise the tension track by two. So if I'm the American, I put two more cubes in Italy. Mm -hmm. That's the green track. I'm going to raise, well, gee, move that over here. I'm gonna raise mine two spaces. If I remove markers from an area using a card that has a nuclear marker, I'm going to reduce my tension. Right. So you need to manage the tension because if more markers go up, you start nuclear war before the end of the game. And the danger is that there are cards that will accidentally cause that. Right. Or you can engineer your opponent into starting it, much like Twilight Struggle. So that you're going to go through and do this for three turns. At the end of each turn, the tensions move up. Um, a turn, you play four cards during a turn. You have five cards in your hand. So again, much like Twilight Struggle, you're able to bury a card. Right. At the end of the game, you have one round. It's called the Aftermath, where all those cards that are buried are revealed. And we total up the cubes that are pro-American and pro-Soviet. Whoever has more gains two victory points. Okay. The beauty of the game is I've had a lot of people, oh, Twilight Struggle is way too difficult. This is way too difficult to play. Last night we played it with a couple people who had no idea of the history, no idea of a, of a um, card-driven game, sat and explained it. I helped them through one turn, and then I started paying attention elsewhere. They were able to play the remainder of the game without needing to refer to the rules or ask questions, which to me was a great thing. Right. Um, the only thing that slowed them down was that they didn't know what all the cards were already, which is a danger in any game when it's new. If they would have played it a second time, they would have known the cards and been fine. Um, at Origins, when we did this last year, um, we had a couple of people with a prototype who played it, and then 
so understood it after one game, they took the prototype copy, beat me up for it, took it to the open gaming area, and they were teaching people in the open gaming area, which is why I hate Canadians now, just for the record, <laughs> if you're out there and you know we, who, who you are. We don't really hate Canadians. They're, That's they, right. Like, They're too high. I just blame, I just blame this is, Canada. This is coming from a great game. I, I just blame area. Canada. Sorry. So you know who you are out there in the middle of Alberta. That's right. Um, so that they played it and they started teaching other people so that everybody that played had a complete understanding. I, I think that's great when you don't have to refer to the rules and everybody can understand the game. Right. And so a lot of the people that said, oh, you can't ever do Twilight Struggle in 45 minutes, they played it's like, oh my God, you were right. This is Twilight Struggle in 45 minutes. Okay. The one other thing we've done for the game that I think is important with, with history games, whether they're a war game, a uh, social game, Euro game, however you want to put it, is um, we included a brief history in the game of what each of the cards is and the chronology of the history because we're at a point 53 years later nobody realizes how close the world came to nuclear war and I think that's an important social point so that you can read it it's a brief history it's in a separate book it's actually um, the one that you're holding right there mm-hmm. underneath there there's yep. uh, rules and that's the history book right that, that we wrote so that people can have an idea of the cards they're playing that they're not just playing three te- you know three three markers they, right. they understand what XCOM was beyond a really cool computer game. Um, what <laughs> what will Fidel now. Castro... Yeah. Yeah. You know, they really should give us some free advertising <laughs> just for my mention of XCOM, which is available on Steam, too. It's basically for all the gamer parents now. <laughs> yeah. <their> children. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, so, but, but like Fidel Castro, what role, what role did he have? And doing the game and doing the history for this, um, we took it seriously. I learned some stuff about the crisis that I hadn't been aware, such as the U.S. actually uh, launched test depth charges onto a Soviet submarine, and that on that sub, they had to take a vote whether to launch nuclear missiles at the United States. Okay. They needed an, a unanimous 3-0 vote. The executive officer refused to give in to the political officer. If he would have given in, the world would be ended. So the courage of one man on a Soviet sub kept us from nuclear war. I had not really been aware of that until we did this game. That's where they should have made a vodka after that guy, right? <laughs> so, um, okay. it ships to stores yeah, so, this next week. Yeah, so the, the game's okay. available. Um, it will be a game that will be in stock. So, okay. uh, we're excited for the stores. Um, we're also uh, partnering uh, with international partners. And we're localizing the product in uh, several different languages. Uh, those are starting to come on board now, like French, Italian, Spanish. So we'll figure out that right. uh, dynamic. But uh, we will also want to have those countries be able to have this in their, in their language, which will make that an easier uh, okay. sell for the product. As soon as you get the Russian edition, you know you've, yes, you've yeah, done, we are, done a good job here. We are working that right now. That's right. <laughs> Covering both markets. Yes. That, uh, the, the one other thing with this countries. that's cool, given that we're talking to Board Game Geek, is the designers are very active on BGG. And under the 13 Days Game Forum, they have done a full diary and blog of the whole development process of the game. Yeah. So for people who really think this is cool, you can go there and read their blogs on how they determine the cards, the balance, and Asger and Daniel are happy to answer questions on the decisions. It's, I, I really like it when gamers have access to the designers and can ask those questions. Right. And conveniently, Board Game Geek is the forum for that. It, it's often so available. Them. Them. Yeah. Thanks for the overview. <laughs>